what is open data? Defining open data. Um, you know, I think uh, the way that I understand sort of what open data means is that, you know, the New York, New York City government works for New Yorkers. And as a result, all of our sort of records, all of our work product belongs to you, belongs to New Yorkers. This is open data is our sort of, you know, set of uh, information and, and recorded uh, uh, um, the recorded history of all of the things that are happening um, uh, from New York City, by New York City government, from New York City government, um, and that information is yours. Um, all New Yorkers are, we're all, we're all in this together, and I think that the, um, uh, the existence of this open data set, uh, or this open data collection, um, really kind of shows the growing importance of data in our everyday lives, in the everyday life of city government, um, and the way and the evolving ways that New York City government can use data um, to help serve New Yorkers more effectively and just all in all operate more efficiently and equitably for um, for everyone across the city. So we're going to talk a little bit about kind of the some of the history of, of how open data was created. Um, I studied history in school, so I'm a huge history nerd. And I think, you know, one of the one of the ways that I came to data was was through this kind of um, through this understanding of data as kind of our recorded history, right? This is this is all of the the, the records of what has been happening, um, and sometimes I think people think of data as like a very recent um, phenomenon, uh, like you know this is you know just since the computer age, but the city has been collecting data since basically the beginning of the city. <laughs> um, so this is if you. Uh, um, uh, you may you may be familiar with the city record. Um, the history of the open data movement really goes all the way back to sort of good government efforts um, back to the late 1800s and the progressive era of government reform in the city. If you're also a New York City history nerd, this will probably be really familiar. Um, you know, this the creation of the city record was a part of this uh, was a part of this progressive reform movement um, to share uh, to share public information about what the city was up to, um, or what the city is up to. Uh, the city record started publication in 1873. Fun fact, if that comes up on Jeopardy this week, you can thank me for uh, for that uh, sweet, sweet bit of knowledge. Um, and uh, it's still it's still going. <laughs> so you can still find the city record. Um, and now it's online. So you can uh, take a look at it uh, um, at nyc.gov slash city record. Um, in fast forwarding about 100 years or so, we're into the age of the Freedom of Information Law or the Freedom of Information Acts um, that were passed around the country that makes that basically um, say that you can you can request information or request data from the government and the government has to have a good reason not to share that information basically um, you know if you ask for it they should share it unless there's a, a very a very good reason. Um, and this was sort of a revolutionary concept and uh um it became law in new york state in 1974 it was a federal law in 1967 um so we are we are uh we are up to sort of you know recent history here i love i love all of the stamps and like memorandum scribblings on this image <laughs> like a good reminder of uh of how uh inform what we all did before email i guess um and then in 1993, so again, a couple of decades later, New York City released its very first public data directory, um, which made uh, a which made available sort of a listing of the data sources that this that city agencies had available. Um, so instead of you know a FOIL request where sort of people had to know specifically what they were asking for, um, this was a directory of the places that you could you know the the systems that the city was using to track information. So you could you could know that for example there was a um, uh, you know the Department of Buildings has a system called Biz, which I believe stands for the Building Information information system and actually still exists today. Um, so uh, uh, this the public data directory also established a public liaison for each agency. And we'll talk about kind of how that's evolved to now that we are in the age of open data. So 
Um, as, as, we, as we mentioned, the New York City data, open data law is now 10 years old. Um, our office will be enjoying a sheet cake from Wegmans in honor of this <laughs> anniversary tomorrow. So if you need a good excuse to uh, eat cake this week, um, you can say you're celebrating the birthday of the New York City open data law. Um, this uh, bill was passed with the um, with the help of an encouragement from advocates, city staff, elected officials, a whole um, amazing crew of, of people, including the borough presidents, um, uh, came together to make this law a reality. Um, many cities have open data laws, um, but New York City's is actually one of the very strongest across the country. It guarantees that the public will have access to information in perpetuity, regardless of the administration. So there's not sort of, you know, breaks uh, when one mayor switches, um, you know, there's not supposed to be any sort of interruption in access to information um, on the part of the citizens. Um, and a key difference between uh, sort of the FOIL age or the FOIA age and the open data age is that you don't have to ask. This information is just up there, it's available, it's ready for you to, uh, to use. Um, it's shared by default is sort of how we like to think about it. Um, there's been some laws passed since 2012 to sort of uh, improve and, and refine the open data rules, including sort of making sure that there um, is geographic, uh, geospatial information available if it if it's applicable to that data set. Um, and uh, if you're if you really want to go deep in this, this is all in the administrative the administrative code. So um, there's a series of of amendments to uh, local law 11, which was uh, of 2012, which was the law that established um the new york city open data all right that was our fun sort of like romp through history of open data um so what is it what does open data look like today um we have public data available about almost any facet of city life that you can think of any aspect um this illustration shows some of the um, New York City open data as it relates to kind of the physical envir environment in the city. Um, so where are all the public recycling bins? What is the pavement rating for this particular street? Um, what is the restaurant inspection results for this restaurant on this block? Um, you know, was there a complaint received about an elevator in this this building? It's sort of you can kind of see like you know if you peel back the 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 image, there's little pieces of data that um, that that are that are touching kind of like every different piece of this uh, of this random day in in uh, Union Square. <laughs> um, and uh, public data, you know, to better to get a kind of a better sense of what what we're talking about when we're talking about data here, um, there's a couple criteria for what makes a data set um, a data set, I guess, um, as opposed to just information or or knowledge. Um, the first criteria is that it needs to be machine readable, which is sort of a fancy word for like it has to be a table. Um, and if you're familiar with Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel, um, basically when I'm when I say a table, what I mean is like it has to have kind of a row uh, and it has to, it has to have rows and columns essentially, um, which is a format that computers can understand. It can, the computer can kind of read that information in um, and structure it so that you can interact with it. Um, and so an example here would be like New York City Parks has a data set that has one row for every tree in New York City, which is amazing. Um, so each row it represents a tree and each column represents some information about the tree, like the species of the tree, the size of the tree, the latitude and longitude of the trees. So if you think back to, you know, geography, um, there's a point associated with every spot on the globe. Um, so we can say exactly where in New York City that particular tree is, which is still blows my mind. Um, and there are other there are other types of data and there's other other obviously tons of different types of information so you can think about meeting meeting records um uh notes from uh, uh, uh what's that called transcripts all of all of that kind of stuff is is it's public information and it's available you know via via foil but it's not 
strictly speaking data. It's not machine readable. So for example, this map that is like a beautiful archival map of what uh, the original plan for Central Park, so the Frederick Law Olmsted original plan for Central Park, you know, I can't kind of like have the, I can't have Microsoft Excel open this map, unfortunately. Um, so it's not what we call machine readable. So that's just a little distinction here when we're talking about what open data is or what data data is as opposed to sort of what falls into the category of you know information or public public information but is that isn't data per se um so another criteria is that the data that's published on open data can't be private or confidential um so we closely review data sets when they're being published to make sure that there's no sort of personal information that we're inadvertently um revealing about new yorkers um and there are some exceptions to this so for example um you know we publish every um we publish the payroll administration data um for the city so we you know there's i i am in this data set you can look me up um zachary's in this data set um and it says, you know, our name, where we work, and you know, our salary, and that's that's considered, you know, essential public information. Um, but we wouldn't have this equivalent data set for like, you know, everybody that works at, um, you know, the coffee shop down the street, right? They, there's no sort of vital public interest in publishing the individual, um, in individually identifying information. Um, and we care very strongly and and are very protective of of making sure that we're not um we're not disclosing any information that might um publicly identify um a citizen you know without without there being a um a really good reason um okay so as of 2022 open data contains more than 3,000 data sets and billions of rows of data so this is a huge data set um uh or a huge set of data sets uh and it's managed by the New York City Open Data Team, which is housed at the New York City Office of Technology and Innovation. So um, with the recent uh, uh, with the recent sort of new administration with Eric, Mayor Eric Adams, they've reorganized some of the um, uh, they've re reorganized the city's technology offices. So we're now all part of one um, cool new organization called the Office of Technology and Innovation. So if you hear us talk about, you know, uh, the mayor's office of data analytics versus office of data analytics, and OTI, we're all, it's all kind of, we're all one, we're all one team. So um, just some, you know, the New York City government definitely could have used some more acronyms. So we're, we're helping to, uh, helping to contribute to that. Um, and this huge wealth of information is only made possible by the fact that we have about a hundred open data coordinators that are spread throughout city government and every agency or office or commission, whatever you can think of, um, they have an open data coordinator. And those open data coordinators are the folks that we work with to make sure that their agency's data is published on the New York City open data portal in compliance with the New York City open data law. Um, and it's not as easy as just sort of like slapping a data set up there we want to make sure that those data sets have um have documentation that they are being updated regularly so it's a big job and we're really we're really unbelievably lucky to work with such an amazing network of people that that work so hard to make sure that uh new york city's public data is is up it's great it's ready to it's ready to go so Let's have an overview of the open data portal itself. If you went ahead and visit nyc.gov forward slash open data, it'll bring you to this page. And this is exactly what you'd see. You can go ahead and search in key terms to go ahead and have a look. Otherwise, you can go ahead and click data at the top nav there. If you were to, it'll bring you to this page where you can see that we Group some data sets for easy access based on certain categories, like by agency, by category, popular data sets, and the newest data sets. Taking a step back to that landing page, if you wanted to go ahead and put a term, let's say like 311, and by the way, um, 311 is a government resource for assistance outside of emergency situations. Um, it's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, available in over 175 languages and covers roughly 3,600 government services available on phone, web, Skype, Twitter, Facebook, and other mobile apps. 
and goes to create one of the most interesting data sets I think we have on the portal. So if you were to go ahead and look up 311, you get a listing by relevance. You should see the data set that we currently maintain for 311 from 2010 to present. By clicking that link, you will go ahead and be, and you would see our primer page for the data set. This page has some key information when you start to have a look and investigate and explore a new data set. Let's have a look at what we can see here. You get a sense of the size of the data set. And as you can see here, we have over 27 uh, million rows, 41 columns. And you can see that each row is a 311 service request. That other highlight just came up, lets you know when the data set was last updated. And that's pretty important. You wanna make sure as you're looking through data to make sure if it's current, if it's still relevant. So it's another key thing to watch out for and look out for when you go ahead and visit a data set and its primer page. Another thing is you wanna get a sense of how often it updates. Sets expectations, so you can come back and check it. You know it's supposed to update daily. And this lets you know how frequently accessed the data set is. Over 400,000 views and just about the same in downloads. Pretty popular. So one of the most important pieces to the primer page, and I just want to highlight this, is a data set data dictionary. It carries some key information that helps you understand the data set better. Um, it usually captures more of the nuance, the limitations to a data set. So I think it's really important whenever you're exploring a data set, just have a look at it. If we were to look in this data dictionary for 311, this is what we'll see. So you'd have a column for the names that's in the data set as it presents on the portal. You will have a column for the description, expected values, which is really helpful. You know, it, it, it'll give you the distinction between the different type of values you should expect to see. You should be able to explain blanks. And then you also have notes provided by the agency as well. So back to the primer page. If you wanted to go ahead and explore the data, as we've been talking about, you'd go ahead and click view data at the top, right? So let's get into filtering with open data, right? As we know, we have 27 million rows. There's no way we're just gonna scroll through all of that. This is how the data table would look. Again, with um, 41 columns, you might wanna have a look at relevant columns that will help you filter this data in a relevant way, right? And right now we're looking at a complaint type. Every service, every request for service is filed under a particular complaint type. 41 of these columns. And here we have a row of data. You can see some fields that also correspond, a unique key, created date, more than 27 million rows, right? So let's look into how we could filter to make things easier for us. All right. So here in the filter tab on the right panel, once you're viewing the data, you would go ahead and click that. And that'll open up this panel here where you can choose which column or field you would like to go ahead and filter on. And right now we have community board chosen and we have community board is one in Queens. And as you can see, that'll make your records drop from 27 million to 546,000. Again, this is a snapshot. I'll be doing this live. The numbers might be different because we're constantly updating, right? But much more manageable. And that's the key thing about filtering on the open data portal. Here's an example of a more complex filter. Right now, we still have the same community board, community board one in Queens. We have a created date going after the first of the year. And we're looking for items that were assigned to the Department of Sanitation. Another key thing I wanted to point out is that once you added those filters, the numbers dropped even more. So let me go ahead and show you just how easy it is to do live. You can feel free to follow along. I'm going to go ahead and make my way to the portal and I'll show you how this all works. Exciting, a live demo. <laughs> Thanks, Noel. So let me do exactly as I showed you, right? Let's go ahead and punch in 311. Here's that same data set we talked about, view data. I'm going to go ahead and move tiles out the way. All right. So let's go ahead and get a created date. We want that field, right? Because we want everything in the beginning of the year. Something important I wanted to show you was uh, we have some operators here, right? We want everything after. So you can actually drop down and select. Uh, you could have is as a strict um, operator for just a specific date only. You can do after. So you start from a specific date and it shows everything after that. And that's what I'm doing. 
you can move through this by clicking the year, stepping back one. But we'll stay in 2022, picking January first. So right now, we just created a filter for everything after January first. Let's add on some more. We wanted everything from sanitation, right? So let's make sure we have that chosen. And I'll go ahead and add on one more. I also want to do a different community board. Cool. Got it. Um, some things I wanted to show you with the operator once more, when you're entering things that is going to look through text, you can use the contains. I think that it works in a more human readable way for me. Um, let's say if I didn't necessarily know exactly the acronym for an agency, you know, you can, you can get away with a little bit here and it actually searches just fine. So as you can see, I applied it and you want to make sure these blue um, check marks are ticked off. As you can see, we already got it shrinking down from 27 or so million. And now we got sanitation. We got records after the first of this year. Let's do one more. <laughs> A little nod to Community Board 10 from Manhattan. Let's see what we have. So about 600, 607 rows, right? For uh, assigned to, uh, to sanitation and all coming from Community Board 10 in Manhattan. From here, you can actually save this if you created an account. Otherwise, you can export it outside and I'll show you how to do that right now. So have a look. You go here to export and you have a variety of formats that you could use. CSV, JSON, et cetera. So yeah, you could use this outside of the portal as well, or you can save it to your account by creating an account. And I highly recommend it. It's pretty fun to keep track of what you're doing. So just want to make sure we're, we're, we're all following along. Everything seems good. Thumbs up. All right. Great, great. So let's have a look at visualizing the data, right? This is the next step. So if you wanted to visualize the data, same thing on the primer page of the data set. Go ahead. Instead of view data this time, you click visualize. That'll bring you to this page. And you have filter options. You'll be able to select chart types. Here they are. The portal does a pretty good job of recommending what kind of chart types go along with the data that you're looking at already. And you can see it highlighted by the little green dots. So you can play around and get a sense of what you really need. Right now, we're looking at a pie chart here. To the right, we have our filter. And as you can see, it's looking for a created date uh, March 21st, 2021. It's really versatile here. You get to pick your dimensions, what you want to group by. And you also want to make sure you're counting by the actual records and make sure that's accurate. So with that, as you can see, we got 311 increase on March 21st, 2021, broken down by borough. And you could easily create this if you wanted to. Let's have a look at another type. Got a plot map here. This is how you select that one. And this is possible with 311 because we do have latitude and longitude, right? In this case, we have a filter and we're choosing records from yesterday. You can do that. And here we have 301 requests submitted on a single day. Real easy. Here we got a bar chart and we start to dive a little bit deeper, right? So you, you see the selector for the chart type for bar chart. We're breaking down by specific complaint types, right? Still measuring by count of rows. You got the agency we want to hear from, and we got our specific date range between the first and the second of 2021. And here you can see when you break that down by your complaint type, got some things like street conditions, street light conditions, traffic soon, et cetera. So you can kind of do this for your area as well. So thanks for sitting with me through this demo. Let's have a look at some tools that really took their use of open data to another level, I could say. For one, we'll start with the Open Data Project Gallery. Um, there's many online tools that pull data from New York City Open Data. You can find examples, and I also have a few keyed up. So I'll go ahead and pull those up. One second. All right, this is a cool one, all right? Uh, WeGov, NYC WeGov. So this one is taking a look currently at um, capital projects. You can see the number of projects active in New York, the original estimation for the cost, where we currently are. You get a listing of what kind of projects are going around in the city. It's also um, powering a map here where you can see specific jobs going on and you could select. This is kind of a really cool one to see capital projects going on in the city. 
This is another one here I have, uh, Crash Mapper. Uh, gives you a sense of how safe the streets are in New York. Here, we already have it filtered for February, 2022. And the cool thing you could do is you could add on boundaries. So we got our boroughs. If you wanted to switch from that from our neighborhood, you can look at that. I'm originally from Canarsie. So you could actually go ahead and zoom in. I think it's taking a little time to load, but yeah, all the issues that happened where I grew up around. And then you can also filter for a more current timestamp. Great table here, letting you know what the colors mean. Um, it has size differences. And this is all built on open data. Oh, yes. NYC.gov forward slash maps. Maps built directly by the city. You saw you scroll through a couple of them. This is a pretty cool one. Street trees built directly by the city. As you can see, I'm a little Brooklyn biased, but let's have a look. I mean, it's pretty cool. It gives you, as we mentioned before, you might have heard about the street trees data set. We have the diameter, the species, Latin long, and this is how we're able to uh, plot this. And this is built directly from the city, not necessarily on open data. We have a data set of it provided to us, but this is built directly by the city as a map. Just wanted to show you this. I thought it was pretty cool. My favorite kind of trees are weeping willows. And I think my dentist used to have one, but <laughs> I don't think I could see it on this data set here. Let's have a look at another map. This one was pretty cool. I took a look through it yesterday and honestly, I was kind of blown away. So I'm just gonna go through just a bit of a journey. I mean, I used to be up and down Eastern Parkway a lot. Here we have the, mu the museum, the armory. I used to pass around here as a kid when my dad used to drive. Had no idea it was a landmark. I mean, I should have known, but yeah, this data set confirms that. You get to see a lot of information. You can see the style that it has. So this is pretty cool stuff, I think. So you just learned about the NIC open data as a program. So like, yeah, how to get started using the NIC open data and also how to view the data, filter the rules and also how to visualize the data set. But now like we just like take a step back and think about the reasons why the people would be working with the open data in the first place. So like sometimes it can be really purely like exploratory. So you just want to like play around and then see what's out there. And also like what kind of the municipal data is really available in the open data set. But like most, but most time people have very specific questions. Like, yeah, so that's why they visit the open data set to answering their questions. And also like, yeah, they, so, and then they know that some of the data is already available in the open data set. So, and so like in the for next like 15 minutes, uh, like I want to like introduce some framework you can take from today's section. So how like we can use the NIC open data to answer your own question and then solve the problems. And this slide like showing like, yeah, you can see uh, the sequence of the five steps. So, and then we, this is like kind of the framework and then how you like, yeah, define your problems and then using the data and then like have some like helpful answer to make the decisions. So we can go over these five steps for the next 10 and 15 minutes. And then, so the first step is to define the problems. So like, yeah, you may have your own like the questions, problems in your mind, but today for like, yeah, the, for today's the section, so like the, I have the one examples of the question, like the problems we can like, yeah, trying to solve together. So let's imagine you are working for the New York City, the agency that would like to implement some like the supporting program for the restaurant have some impact by the pandemic. So, and then the, the city agency would like to distribute uh, small grants or the loans to like, yeah, to the restaurant. So you are the person who is in charge, like in charge of the developing this program and you want to decide which restaurant should receive this funding or like which neighborhood, like you should targeting for these programs. So, and then like, yeah, so that's the, our, the problem. 
and then we can like yeah trying to serve today and then and then how can you using the NIC open data to support your work so and then the the following step is to identify the list of the data set that can be helpful to answer your question. And also like, yeah, and then also like you need to familiarize yourself with the, that data set. So like, yeah, indeed the first really the step is, so you need to searching the relevant like data set by like using this like search bar as like the go over like so you can type in like some key terms and then so like for example this one showing like yeah the business or restaurant so you type these key terms and then you have this list of the like the result you get the result of the data set so and i would say like if you are not familiar with the open data or if you are not familiar with the city data as much, and then this will require some desk research time and also like, yeah, to understand, like, yeah, to find the relevant the data set and also to understand each data set. So like identify which data set it can be like really helpful to answer my the problems. But like for today's like, yeah, presentation purpose, like this is the list of the data set that might be like, yeah, helpful for our the questions. And yeah, actually like, yeah, we are not in the rush here, So like we can quickly go over to the one of the data set. And out of the, this list, yeah, I want to introduce like one of the data set that is like MWB, LBE and the EB, like the business list. So if you are not familiar with the, this acronym, so like the, the New York City is, has the certification programs for like, yeah, example, like the minority and the woman owned the business enterprise. So like, yeah, so they like city has the decertification program and then trying to like, yeah, promote and then foster the growth of the MWB business in the city, like through the city's the country. So like, and then this like data set, you can find like all list of the, the businesses who are like, uh, yeah, certified these programs. So you might be thinking like, yeah, this, if you want to like prioritize like the MWB business for your restaurant support program, this data set might be like useful. So if we quickly recap what we learned from the before, it's like, yeah, first checking the like latest update date. So it's the February 7th. So like it's, you can like, I guess like this data is like pretty like, yeah, updated like recently. And then also like, or go over some of the like the columns. And then my main question is like, since I'm only focusing on the restaurant, but this data set is covered all of the businesses. So I'm wondering like, is there any columns like you can like identify the restaurant business quickly? So at that time, you can using this either like data dictionary or this list of the columns. So which like columns might be like, yeah, the key columns to identify the list of the types of the businesses, which like, yeah, maybe, yes, we can using like this, like, yeah, business description column. So which, yeah, you can using like, I my guessing is like, yeah, we can using these columns to identify the restaurant. So, and then let's go back to the, the slide. So this is like, so after like listing up all of the relevant the data set. So, and then the next step is what I just show you. And then, so like you, like the next step is to understanding each data step by using the data dictionary or like overview of the description. So, and then like what this data set is covered and then what columns are available. And then this data set, whether this data set has the, the like, yeah, the columns you are really looking for. So you need to understand like each data set using like the yeah, data dictionaries and then description. And this is like another example. There is the data set named like NIC business Acce acceleration businesses program. And then like you might wondering, like this looks like another existing city program. And then like you're wondering if this program already provide like same kind of the financial support I'm planning. But like, and then you can review the data dictionary and then this description of the data set, you figured like, yeah, it's not 
is not correct. Like this, based on the, this data dictionary, this program provides in-kind support only. So this may be also useful when you're deciding which restaurant your agency should give the financial support. And then, so like, yeah. And then the, like, while you are really like digging in, in the open data set, like the open data team, like, yeah, you might have to like further like the questions and then like, like why like the, all the open data team and then city agency, like, like trying to their best to fill out all of the information in the data dictionary, but still there might be like, you have the question. So like, I highly recommend like, if, like contact the op NIC open data help desk if you like have any like yeah, questions. So in the tab navigation, you can find this contact us menu. So you can find this contact us in the every like pages in the open data. So you can like, yeah, contact, you can contact this help desk with your questions. And then once you identify the data set that I like have full in like determining which restaurant should be receiving the funding, the, the third step is to frame really specific question you can answer with the, this data set. So for example, like, yeah, we could ask this following question in the right hand corner from the like, yeah, which restaurant received the grade A inspection rate to the like, which restaurant are like located in the like, yeah, the busy area. So those like, yeah, you have more narrowed down your problem and then like, yeah, have the very specific question. And then like, yeah, let's focus on the first question about the restaurant inspection grade. And then like, yeah, the, if you go to like this, like DOHMA's restaurant inspection, the data set, it's the same process. It's always important thing is like, yeah, checking all the like available columns and then what the columns are like represent. So here is the, this is the column name from the DOHMA inspection data set. And then there is the description. So like definitions of the each column. So you can go over this list and then you can identify in the end, there is the grade column. And then this is like, yeah, the grade associated with the inspection. So you can, yeah, you can figure out, I can like, yeah, filtering the restaurants with the grade A or B, like, yeah, based on the, these columns. And then like, yeah, the finally, like it's time you really crunching the numbers to answer your like specific question and then conduct some analysis like, yeah, by creating some chart or like summary tables to answer your the question. So if we go back to the DOHMH, the restaurant inspection, the data. So your question was like, our question was like, which restaurant have received the grade A, the inspection rate in the last year. So what we can do is like, yeah, we can like making quick visualization directly in the open data. So this is the one example of the like we quickly yeah make creating the bar chart. So this bar chart is showing the number of the restaurant by their like the grade level and then in the Bronx. So but now here what you can notice is the first the bar is like there are many, many restaurants, even doesn't have the grade information at all. So like perhaps like this data set is not maybe like not really useful in helping you determine which restaurant should receive the funding just because the grade column is not robust as you expected. So it's like, yeah, it, it cannot be like, yeah, the fair criteria when you decide the restaurant. So in the cases, I always like going back to the data dictionary again. And then if there are any reasons or justification from the DOHMH, like, about these missing values. So if like, yeah, that's the also like important the steps. And then, yes. So after, or like you have conducting analysis, you answering your like specifications. So you should be better informed to make the decisions or provide like stakeholders with the, some like recommendation with the actual, the data. So yeah, so this is the framework. I hope you can take from today's section to answer your own questions.
And then, yeah, so this is really last part of the, our presentation. So how to get involved in the open data community. And this is like, we already go over, like, yeah, if you cannot find any data set in the open data, like, yeah, you can request a data set or, and also have any question you can using this open data help desk. And then, yeah, the Doug already mentioned, like there is the open data project gallery, and then this is really fun. And then many like, yeah, people like already like created like data visualization or application based on the like powered by open data. So you can also submit your own project this, yeah, in the, this program. So there's Somebody. a question in the comment, which is how long does it usually take to receive a response from the help desk? Yeah, so usually it takes anywhere from a day to a couple of weeks. I think the time is set to be no more than two weeks. So that's the service level agreement, is my understanding, that questions need to be responded to within two weeks. That doesn't mean that you're going to get the answer that you need within two weeks. There, your question might be about adding a new data set, which that might take a longer time, but they should respond within two weeks. How reliable is the data in on the open data portal? So I think the answer really depends. The data is used for government operations. So by and large, it's very accurate. There are cases where there's data quality issues. I know in my organization, for example, we posted some data and somebody actually noticed an issue with the data, which was something that hadn't been noticed before. It does happen occasionally. There are some data discrepancies or inaccuracies in the data, but that's also one of the benefits to making this available to the public is that we get more eyes on it. We can improve on it which is great. But one thing that I should mention is that, and I say this a lot, you know, while the data is yours, it's for the general public. It wasn't created for the general public, right? So it's created for a specific business operation, which may or may not meet your specific needs. So that needs to be understood as well. There was somebody who was joking that open data is not Burger King. You can't have it your way. Great. And I also add one more comment in terms of the reliability is I would say like the data set is pretty like reliable in terms of the data integrity. But uh, most of the issue I also encounter the issue with open data set is some of the data set is updated like long time ago and that hasn't been like recently updated. So it's like the data set is not the reflect the recent the situation. So that's why I, it's always important thing is like when is the last update the data set before going into the data set. So if that like the subject area you are like working on is to have the some like recent changes and then like that in that case is like the when is the last update date information is really useful and important and then if the data is not really updated for a while like that might be have some yeah issues in terms of the reliability and just to add, I know both Doug and Sujin mentioned this, but if you ever notice an error or have a question about open data, please do contact our help desk and either you'll get a response okay. from the open data team or the agency that manages the data. We have an anonymous question here. So can you ask about the data integration? What is the data integration process between city agencies publishing the data do it and the open data portal team. Sometimes the summonses that they issue to Oath and ECB, which are published on the open data, are not showing up correctly or sometimes not available. So I, I could answer that one. In general, especially for larger data sets that are updated frequently, the data is automatically moved from the city's systems that are used for whatever sort of like thing you're looking at, in this case, summonses to the open data team, and that includes the Do It staff, and then to the public open data site. This is a great way. Maybe there is an error. Maybe there's something that maybe it's a mistake you made. Maybe it's a mistake in the data. But either, either way, we, we will definitely want to hear about it so we can help you. Stacy from Community Board 3 in Staten Island asks, when is the data on the open data portal Updated. That really depends on each agency and each data set, right? Every data set has its own frequency. Some data like 311 is updated daily. Other data sets might be updated less frequently. They might be weekly, monthly. We have a couple of data sets that are updated quarterly, for example. Some data is even updated annually. So it really depends on the agency and the specific data set. They're all different. Would it be correct to say that the data on the open data portal each agency on the open data portal is responsible for the validity of the data that it puts onto the open data portal. 
Yeah, so the short answer is yes. Every agency has, again, every agency has an open data coordinator and the data goes through various reviews within the, each agency before it gets posted to open data. So as Zachary said, if an issue with accuracy or things like that are, are identified, by all means, submit a question to the open data help desk and the agency will try to rectify. How will open data display information for agency reports or does the open data portal contain data from agency reports? In general, most tools that are based on open data will provide the data, right? So it will provide a link to the data on the open data site, um, or it might give you the ability to download the data directly from the application. Typically, that will be made available. And I think the like one of the mandates for the older city agency is if, if you like publishing any public report or like dashboard on your agency website, or that the, like the data should be publishing in the open data. So I'm also fully know about the scope of the, this, like the city planning's racial impact data tool. But if this tool is going to be public in the city planning's website, or like they like created another website with this tool, they must like yeah, publishing the underlying data for that tool in the open data. So that will take some time. Yeah, they may be DCP first publishing that tool, but they also like, yeah, after some like weeks later, they must publish in the open data. So Jacare, like, yeah. Yeah, in general, the idea is that mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to go to 20 agency websites to find 20 different data sets. You could find it mm -hmm. all on New York City Open Data. And then once it's available, it has to be kept in sync. So it's not as if you post this tool, uh, this map, for example, on your website that updates once a day and you only update the open data once a month. They have to be in, in step. Great. With that, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you, Open Data Ambassadors, we love having you in the family. And thanks, Moda, for being such great collaborators for Open Data. We look forward to hosting many more Open Data trainings for all community board members and for all residents of all boroughs.